Hey guys, I'm Nicole. I'm a homeschooling mom to two boys. One is in kindergarten level and the other is in like preschool, pre-K. He mostly just does some school stuff to hang out with his older brother. And I'm going to be reviewing and comparing two different maths for you today. Lessons for Living Education Level 1 and Singapore Dimensions Level K. So let's get right into it. Okay, so I'm going to kind of compare some different points about each of them, and then I'll go ahead and do a flip through at the end of the video. So first, I would say cost. Um, right now, you can get the Lessons for Living Education. Um, at least this is the only one I checked, but it's on sale for $30 print, $30 ebook, either way. And you do have the option of um, buying the PDF with this one. Whereas, which I think is nice because then you can reuse it. Um, whereas with the Singapore Dimensions, you don't have the option of the PDF, but you do have the teacher's guide that you're buying that you can reuse. Um, so right now I'm going to be using the pre-K with my younger son and the, I just got the kindergarten one for my older. It does come in two parts. So for a whole year, you're buying a teacher's guide. Um, level A and then a textbook and a workbook level A and then you're also getting level B. So all together that is a hundred dollars but keep in mind that you do reuse the teacher's guides so as far as um, what's it called uh, the material that you're going through I can't think of the word but as the textbooks and the workbooks those ones you're gonna throw away um, will be fifty dollars every year and then you'll be able to reuse the um, teacher's guide and I do really recommend the teacher's guide I've gotten teacher's guides for a few other things and haven't really cared for them but Singapore dimensions you definitely want the teacher's guide and I'll explain that in a little bit as far as lessons for a living education this is the one book you need so it's a lot like we use the good and the beautiful um, language arts and it's a lot like that as far as just open and go and it's you know just one page two pages you can actually I believe it's perforated so you can just pull out a page at a time for your kids and then okay so the core way that they each teach is very different so in the lessons for living education they focus on it's very Charlotte Mason they focus on stories so you're learning math through stories and um, my boys love read alouds we've read countless chapter books they have very they're very patient with stories and they get very interested in them but for some reason the stories in this book just didn't quite hold their attention. Um, they would listen to it but they didn't really love it and I thought they were pretty cute but I can see where they were kind of bored of them. Um, I do like the idea of learning through a story but with those specific ones it just didn't really work for my kids but it might work for your family. Um, but yeah, so they go through a story and then, which I'll show you in the flip through, and then there's worksheets off of that story for about a week. And the stories are about two pages. And then in Singapore, it's more hands-on. So every lesson has multiple different hands-on activities for you to do. And I have some um, manipulatives that I have along with it that I will also show at the end of the video that just I specifically use. And um, they also have like, it's called Black Line Masters online for all these printables so you can print out, um, so you can print out um, a bunch of different things that you need for each of the lessons. And yeah, I think that I will go ahead and get into the flip through. Those are the main differences. And for us, the hands-on activities have worked very well. It just, we do it in the morning and it's kind of something to keep one busy or, you know, doing a good activity while the other one I'm focusing on another subject with them. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the flip through and I'll show you guys the differences between them. Okay, we're going to start with Math Lessons for a Living Education, level one. And so when you open it up, you get your lessons all laid out for you. Mostly it's going to go through telling time, addition, a little bit of subtraction, shapes, and counting by um, different digits. And then we get into the um, the schedule, the suggested schedule. I don't really use these 
but I know that a lot of people do like this when it's all laid out. So they do have all of these lessons laid out for you so you know how many weeks you'll need, what days you'll be doing everything. And then I'll kind of go back out in here. So this is a little bit further into the book. So this is um, an example of some of the lessons that you would do. So these are on different days. Here's one of the stories. So it's about twins that are at their grandparents' farm learning about um, math and some science. Butterfly life cycle, it's really cute. Little caterpillar. And then it goes into, sometimes they write letters to their parents. And it goes into different, see this one has a lot of writing. Usually it's not quite as long of stories, but. It's just, to me, it's a bit boring the way it's laid out and then just a bunch of copy work. This is fun. Um, there's just not that many fun and exciting things for them to do, especially at this age. It's a lot of copy work, and you can see for me, it's not that exciting for uh, this level. Um, okay, so that's pretty much it for here. Not, um, it's mostly, it looks just, you know, like a lot of the same. And then at the end, it looks like it has one fun activity, which is pretty cool. So that's that one. Next up, we have the um, Dimensions Math. This is the teacher's guide, KA. So we open it up and what I really like about these, so it has the chapters for this specific book. And then it also has um, program materials, everything you'll need. That's the Blackline Masters. I think I mentioned that for um, something that you download online talks about the activities. But anyway, I really like this. So it goes through each of the um, books, all the way through all of their dimension books, and talks about what is learned in them. So this is really great for kind of assessing, okay, what are, do we need to learn and how far are we, what book should we get rather than, I mean, you could do a test too, but I like seeing what we're going to be learning in each uh, grade level. So let's see, so this is how a typical lesson will look. Um, let's look at this one right here. So it has, this is um, the textbook, so it always shows the textbook page in here. And then it has activities. So these are small group activities, these are the ones I usually use. Um, you can kind of read these and see what they are. And so that's how each of the lessons is going to look. They all have they talk about how to do the textbook and teach it to them and then physical games and activities for them to use, which I absolutely love. Okay, so that's just a few in there and then I'll go through the textbook and workbook really quickly. Here's a workbook, so, sorry, I'll go, <laughs> I'll do the textbook first. So the textbook has the same pages that we just saw. And so it's nice, you can see them in the teacher's guide and kind of follow along with them. And then it will tell you at the bottom down here which page in the workbook to go to. And I do like to prep these the night before, but it honestly, besides that game part, it's pretty open and go. And I just think these are so much more colorful, fun, cross out the thing that is different. So we're learning about patterns here, upside down shoe, it's a cookie with colored sprinkles, it has chocolate chips. And they're all so brightly colored and fun. And we just love doing these. So this is sort the buttons. So it says pre-cut the buttons on page 145. There's not usually much of this stuff in the back. So you would cut these out. There's only a few pages of that. Mostly it's just all stuff that is nice and ready to go. Okay, and the last thing I wanna show you guys is a couple of the manipulatives that we use with Singapore. Um, so we use these, the little blocks from learning resources um, that detach and you can put them together, make different patterns, counting. Um, we use these counters. What are they called? I can't think of the name. I'm too tired today. But these are just little bugs. And honestly, the kids will just play with these, like, just for fun. And they do so many things with them. I hide them in sensory bins and things, but we use these as counters um, for different games we do. Like, we put some bugs in a cup. There were five bugs, we shake it, roll it out, and then there's only three bugs on the table, and you say, how many are hiding? They're learning about subtraction. That was one of the activities in Singapore. Um, these tin frames from 
front dining resources also. And so they connect, um, so you can make as many as you want. So it can go into multiplication when they're a little older. And these um, little wooden shapes, these are just ones that I found on Amazon because it's really hard for them to really understand what a 3D shape is. But I thought these were necessary and helpful. And um, the last thing we have is this, this big tin of pattern blocks that we can use for tangrams or um, different shapes and things like that. And these are also learning resources. Okay, so I think that's everything. If you guys have any questions about either of them, um, let me know. I hope that I covered enough in case you're trying to debate between these two. I know they're very different curriculums, but for me, this is the two that I was trying to debate between. And yeah, thanks for watching you guys. And let me know down below what math you guys are using in your school this year. Thanks for watching guys. Make sure to subscribe. Bye.